Okay, we're going to do one last example using direct proofs. Uh, once again, let's quickly write out the method of a direct proof. We're going to write a statement as a universal conditional statement. If p of x is true, then q of x is true. All right, so for all x in our domain, if p of x is true, then q of x is true. And then we want to take the first part of this, and we want to suppose that x is in our domain and p of x is true. And then finally, we want to conclude or, or uh, deduce that q of x is true. Okay. So let's take a look at this. Now, this is a little different than what we've seen before. Here, I'm not asking you to prove this true. I'm asking you to prove it false. Well, that's interesting. Um, recall that statements are either true or false. That's the definition of a statement. And everything we've been proving have been statements. So this is a statement. Um, notice this is an existential statement, not a universal statement, but it is still a statement, which means it is either true or false. So if this statement is false, that means the negation is true. All right, remember back to module one. Uh, a statement and its negation are opposites of one another. So if a statement is true, its negation is false. If a statement is false, its negation is true. So this statement is false. This means, so uh, let's write this out. Um, if this statement is false, then its negation must be true. Now, with, with direct proofs, we only know how to prove things true. So in order to prove the given statement false, we need to actually find its negation and prove that the negation is true. So let's figure out what the negation of this is. Um, I'm going to rewrite this uh, formally. As there exists an integer m, so that means hmm, let's now let's do. There exists an, an m greater than or equal to 3, where m is an integer, and m squared minus 1 is prime. So in the problem, it states such that, but that's really another way of writing and, right? I'm saying this is true, and this is true. So I rewrote it using an and because this looks a lot more familiar. The statement there exists something and something else is true is the form of the negation of a universal conditional statement. So let's write the negation. So recall that if we have a for all x, um, if p of x, then q of x, the negation of this form or statement will be there exists an x such that p of x is still true and q of x is now false. Right? So we can call this. Uh, let me 
me rewrite this a little bit. I'm going to change it. I'm going to go back to the way I had had it. I'm going to say there exists an, an M in the integers. was that such that m is greater than or equal to 3 and m squared minus 1 is prime so this part becomes my p of x and this part becomes my not q of x Right? So we have the negation, or we have the existential. To negate it, we want to get this universal part out. So I'm going to get the negation. And we're going to say for all x in our domain, for all m in the integers. If, now p of x stays the same, if m is greater than or equal to 3, then, now we do the opposite of the second part, so the opposite is that m squared minus 1 is composite, or is not prime. It's an easier way of putting it, not prime. Okay, so... This negation is what we're going to now prove true. Right, and again, let's go back through that. The statement that we were given is false. If the statement is false, its negation must be true. So we found the negation, and now we're going to prove that true. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite that up here. I don't know why I'm stuck on X. Well, what do we do? For direct proof, we always start out by assuming this first part, or supposing it. So now we want to look at the second part of this. So that was, this was step one, this was step two. Now I'm going to look at the second part, and that's going to be our goal. I have no idea why I started writing in blue. Okay, well, this is a little tricky, but let's, we want to take a look at this. Um, I know, let's try to factor that. What is going on? Factor this into m minus 1 times m plus 1. Hmm. Now we know m is greater than or equal to 3. Right? That's part of our supposition. So if m is greater than or equal to 3, then m minus 1 
is going to be greater than or equal to 2, and this is going to be greater than or equal to 4. Okay, so we can conclude. Actually, I need more space. Right, and if they're greater than 1, and also m minus 1 and m plus 1 are going to be smaller than m squared minus 1. Right, m squared minus 1 is going to be positive. And m is going to be greater than or equal to 3, so m is positive, which means these two factors are both between, uh, are both less than m squared minus 1, and we already noted that they're greater than 1. So m squared minus 1 is a product. of 2 integers greater than 1 and less than m squared minus 1. So it turns out m squared minus 1 is composite and certainly not prime by the definition of prime. By the definition of prime, remember that the only two factors must be one and the number itself. And here we found an additional two factors. Okay. Um, the most important part of this proof isn't actually this general proof itself. It's really the fact of the way we set it up. Because when we first looked at this, this did not fit what we normally think of as a direct proof. We had to do some slight modification, and now we can do a direct proof from it. And again, here it is written up. Um, uh, in a way that may be a little easier to read. Notice we get to this bottom line and then we go up to the bubble.